the uh, Educate program, it started with the number one challenge that almost all customers face today uh, when they're trying to build IoT applications. And that number one problem is actually universally a skills gap. Knowing how to build a full end-to-end cloud-connected IoT solution is challenging. It requires a lot of different pieces to come together. So for the Educate program, we dove into was trying to uh, figure out what really caused the skills gap, right? And figuring out a bridge for learners to provide a prescriptive path uh, to make it as easy as possible uh, to learn. And what we did was we provided a combination of hardware, uh, content, and code uh, to make it make it as uh, straightforward as possible to learn. The uh, reference hardware kit is this right here, and it's made by our manufacturing partner and Five Stack. It's got a secure element. The secure element is pre-provisioned with certificates already baked into it, um, made by our partner, Microchip. Um, and it overall strengthens the uh, security posture of the device itself uh, for secure connectivity to IoT and other applications. Um, it also has uh, 10 individually addressable uh, LED lights, so five on each side. Um, there are RGB LEDs. Um, there are additional two groove connector ports. Um, within the, on the sides of the device uh, for plug and play accessory expansion. Uh, you've got a, a, a digital analog converter, analog digital converter on the pin. Uh, uh, it's capable of pulse width modulation, UART, uh, even digital input output, just ordinary uh, uh, reads and writes on a, on, on a digital signal. Um, in addition to that, you know, you've got the, the Lego feature in the back uh, that lets you plug in uh, Lego uh, pieces to it. Um, you've also got connects. You've also have some pogo pins um, and other options for actually securing this hardware to your application. And lastly, it's got a 500 milliamp battery in the back of it. What I did was I took the cloud connected Blinky example and I modified it to capture the soil moisture readings and visualize the data in Grafana. Um, yeah, so, so, you know, I, it, the soil was dry, you saw in the beginning the light was red on the sides, um, indicating that it's dry. And then I added a little bit of water, the moisture reading spiked up, uh, indicating that the uh, moisture level is really high. And then over time, it gradually got drier, right, as the water dissipated or evaporated. And then finally, the LED on the sides visually uh, indicates to me that it's dry again. I should probably water it. Same time too, it's also sending all this data to AWS IoT Core uh, over uh, Wi-Fi. So here's the architecture diagram. And uh, as you can see, the application is architecturally pretty simple, right? Um, if you, you know, starting on the left side, um, starting with the device, uh, you can see that on the Core 2 for AWS IoT Educate uh, hardware, we've attached a M5 stack earth moisture sensor. And that's providing uh, output to the main processor of the device, the SP32. Um, over the uh, the analog digital converter pin. And then the device then transmits the data to IoT Core over MQTT. Um, and IoT Core has a uh, rule set up which writes the uh, data that comes in to a, a Amazon Timestream table. And then the data is then read uh, by Amazon Managed Service for Grafana. And then finally, we're graphing that data in a panel that uh, you can figure. The resulting output of the application, uh, we've got a little screenshot as well on the cloud side in Grafana. You, so you can see here uh, the query and also um, what you saw in the time lapse. To actually create this project, we need to go into the uh, kconfig uh, menu, um, which you know we show in all the tutorials for setting up the Wi-Fi credentials and also the uh, AWS IT MQTT, uh, the broker endpoint address. And one new thing that you need to do is go into the component config uh, of the menu and enable the expansion port feature. And after you ensure that uh, you've got the asterisk to know that it's enabled, um, it'll load up the drivers uh, to be able to use some of the helper functions that we provide for the expansion port. And then you can just exit out of there and save it. The next step is to modify the CMake list file in your main directory. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is kind of an important note. So you can see in the left side of the kind of the Explorer uh, pane there, you can see that it's within the main directory and not the one, the CMake list in the root. Um, and that's a kind of a important thing to, to note here. 
Um, and then within the CMake list file, um, all you need to do is uh, add the word JSON in quotes, um, and this will add the the C JSON library um, uh, from the build system. And that library, you know, you don't need to go look for it anywhere. It's actually included within um, the tool chain that's been automatically downloaded by by uh, Platform IO, the ESP IDF, and Optionally, you could also use any other uh, JSON parser or serializer library that you might be more comfortable with, like the uh, FreeRTOS core JSON library. But uh, for this example, uh, since it's already there, I don't need to import anything else. Uh, we're just going to use uh, the CJSON library, which uh, the build system has the uh, alias has just JSON. So the next thing we do is uh, you need to open up the main.c file and modify the include header section. And so all you're doing here is just, you know, uh, uh, pound sign or hashtag quotes uh, C capital JSON dot H. And that'll uh, give you access to the C JSON APIs. The next uh, thing to do logically is go into your app underscore main, um, which is uh, typically on the bottom. And within there, you could see on uh, line 261 over here, there's a core two for AWS underscore port underscore pin mode. And what you're doing here is, is you're setting the pin mode for port B, which is what the moisture sensor is connected to. It's connected to port B and it's the ADC pin and you're setting it to ADC mode. Um, so that's all you need to do to be able to use the ADC functionality on, on that port. Now we've got everything kind of ready to go. You just need to uh, create a message to be sent to AWS IoT uh, with the readings from the sensor itself. So you're going into the publisher function now. And you need to modify the publisher function because before it was just sending, you know, hello from AWS IoT educate a little string. And instead now uh, you're going to send a, a JSON payload uh, with the sensor readings. We'll use the first truck, uh, which has uh, the member QoS defined as QoS zero, since we're okay without getting an act from IoT core for this demo. Um, and we're using, we're going to specifically use that port B um, function, this helper function, uh, uh, core two for AW, uh, AWS IT, AWS underscore port underscore B underscore ADC underscore read millivolts function. And that'll let us get the millivolts reading from that ADC pin. And then uh, we actually use the C JSON APIs to create a JSON object called payload. And then we're going to set a key with a value of the name of the sensor that we're using. Uh, this is just for like information and kind of like a best practice that I do. Um, and that's, uh, we're using M5 stack earth because that's the name of the sensor. And then uh, uh, there's going to be another key with the value of the actual sensor reading. Okay, so we're storing all that into this uh, JSON object. And then uh, we're going to serialize the object to a string that we can then use to publish to AWS IoT using the uh, AWS underscore IoT underscore MPT uh, publish method, which you can see on line 135. And that's all you need to do to send data to AWS IoT. Now, in addition to that, if you remember in that little uh, time lapse, there are the LEDs on the side, right? To change the LED colors, uh, let's take a look at the uh, if else statement, right? So in the if block here, you can see where uh, the condition is based on the reading being less than 2,700 millivolts. So remember the uh, Grafana uh, view where I said a high reading is, uh, is, is dry, high is dry and low is moist. So we need the reading to be less than 2,700 millivolts. It, 2,700 is our threshold this time for, in this scenario. And that'll indicate a high moisture, right? So the closer you are to zero, uh, zero millivolts, the more conductive or moist the material is, right? Um, and, and, and a maximum dryness is represented by a higher reading. So 3150 is the maximum. So in this example, you know, we've got a reading of 2700 or less is our logic. And then, then we want the, the LEDs on the sides to show green. And we're going to use the function, the, uh, uh, port 2 for AWS underscore SK6812 underscore set side color. And we're going to set each of the side colors with the hex value for green. And then lastly, we're going to call the show method to actually display that on the LED bars. And that's it for that entire uh, 
uh, device side code. 